Now from the host city of so many Pro Bowls, we're on the island of Oahu in the capital city of Honolulu, Hawaii. Today on to week 15 in the NFL, and we've got a good matchup in store as it'll be the Shamrocks of San Juan taking on the Monarchs of Honolulu. Two teams more than ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Hawaii. And no return here to start. It's a fair catch, and they will set up shop at the 25. start the drive and this one goes nowhere losing yardage back at the 22 it'll go as a loss of three right away and it's second down this defense is a difficult one to prepare for one of the best in the league they'll come at you from all angles and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss second and 13 open man downfield is Waddle he's got it Still going inside the 20. And all the way in for the touchdown. Jalen Waddle with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Shamrocks go down the field in just two plays to take the early lead. Myers connects on the PAT. And that makes the score 7-0. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Well, the returner, Trey Tucker, going to bring this one out. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Jacobs to start the drive and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage he'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11 but you look at this defense and they're going to be tough to throw on no doubt currently ranked third in the NFL against the pass and this is where we talk game inside the game top five passing offense versus top five passing defense I wouldn't be surprised defensively if they change up coverages a bit more than usual mm -hmm. to try and combat what they expect to see Second and 11. That one's complete out to Michael Mayer. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. A gain there of 21 yards. They'll look to throw here on first down. Aiming for Jacobs. He's got him reeling it in on the out route. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. It's now the second and six at the 45-yard line. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. They certainly thought they had him surrounded and probably thought they were going to get him on the ground and get the sack, but he was able to elude that. And even though it threw it incomplete downfield, if you're a defensive back, you're loving the pressure that you're seeing from your front. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Second and one. 
completes it right side to Cooper. And he's taken down inside the 30. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Back to throw now on first down. And it's caught. Touchdown. Michael Mayer, 29 yards. And the Monarchs respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. From the end zone, here comes Eskridge. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Now second and seven from the 23. They'll look to throw. Oh, looking for Waddle, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Trayvon Merrig. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he's got Cooper on the out route. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll make it second down. But you look at this defense. We know they're going to be tough to throw on top three in the NFL defending the pass. They may be ranked third against the pass in the league, but they're the best that I've seen so far. Sometimes the numbers don't tell the full story. Second and six. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Kind of a fine line when you're setting up the screen. You don't want to throw it too early and have the defense react too quickly, and you definitely don't want to throw it too late, and that way it's not formed perfectly. Got to make sure you hit it just right. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Open man is Myers. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. So following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw here. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked up by Andre Sisco. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So consecutive interceptions here early on in this one and maybe setting the tone, Charles, for a game where the defense really takes center stage. And don't you think that both offenses are really catching a bit from their coaching staff about avoiding these turnovers that we've seen early? 
I think both teams are trying to find an advantage. We know that. Can one of them break away and take control of this game? Throw caught by Flowers. And he'll go out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. That'll give him eight that time. And they'll be left with second and a couple. That was a lightning fast decision that time. He just caught it and got rid of it. Because he saw his guy was going to be open immediately. So he took the R, the run, out of the play. He took the O, the option, out of the play. And immediately got to the pass. Second and a couple. On second down, a run with Hall. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Flowers going to go in motion right. On first down, right back to Hall. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. 11 yards there, first down. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities, and we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash, too. Derek Nottie makes the tackle. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Here's second and 10. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. He gets it underneath to Hall. The result only four yards there on the play. Third and seven now. Well, it looks like they'll move things around here. Out of the gun now on third down. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. Not too shabby here. This will skip out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. He'll drop to throw. Looking for Cooper. That's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and ten as they've got things rolling on this drive. And a six-yard gain gets them right around the 43. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. Yeah. 
On first down, he'll drop to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. A short throw, and that's hauled in by Mayer. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. That's a game of three. It's third and seven. They'll set up a throw. And that is incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. The kick by Carlson is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And you figure, Charles, they have enough time here in the first half, more than a minute, to put a drive together, at least get them in position to try a field goal. Yeah, they've got all three timeouts at their disposal, so I'm actually thinking bigger. With those three timeouts, that amount of time on the clock, I'm thinking about trying to get a touchdown and settle for a field goal. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Flowers going to go in motion right. They'll look to throw now on first down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Second and ten. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Over the middle and complete to Waddle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Flowers going to go in motion right. Again, he'll drop to throw. To the right side, into the hands of Flowers. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Now they'll audible to something else. Slot man moves right. On third down, here's Hall. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. Myers' kick is good, and that will knot us up at 10. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Now on first down, he's going to sneak it. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. 
So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Second and nine now from the 21. On play action, they'll throw. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This thrown quickly out to Cooper. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Back to throw again. Trying to get it to Adams, but it's intercepted. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Pass the 20! And he's brought down after a very nice gain. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. This one was all about clearing space for this play to work because he's got to leak out of the backfield to his right and then angle his way up the field. And a really pretty throw to put it on him and create the big play downfield. Flowers going to go in motion right. Out of the gun, they run it with Hall. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They work now on second and nine. They'll go again with Hall. And power running here down to the six-yard line. 53 yards rushing for him now to this point. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but uh, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. But whatever was said in the locker room during the break must have worked. They forced the turnover. They didn't get the touchdown, Charles, but it does translate into three points to begin this second half exactly as they discussed in the locker room at halftime. Get some points to get things kick-started. Now start your half off with some momentum. Gives you something to build on for your next possession. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, 
you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. He'll look to throw. And this one is incomplete. Well, they certainly aren't letting up today, partner, because they've forced big turnovers already. And it's been incredibly tough for them to get yards against, let alone put points up on the board. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Fielded just inside the 20. 54 yards on the punt there, 15 on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Now this throw caught left side. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarter oh, the turnover fest continues. Here's another interception. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Andre Sisco. And the return across midfield and to the 46-yard line. So pass interference, the call there always, obviously, Charles, such a subjective call. You agree with the penalty? Well, from where we're standing right now, I think the officials are tightening things up here in the second half. Maybe a defender gets away with that in the first, but this time the flag comes out, and I think it's a good call. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And this one caught downfield by Evans. And touchdown! Mike Evans! And the Monarchs have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Carlson on for the PAT. And that will make this a four-point game.
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. But no run back here. Fair catch, and this will come out to the 25. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They'll start on the ground. Hall. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Option play. Here's Hall. We're off to the fourth corner here in week 15. Back now here on EA Sports. So from the 36 now, first and 10. As we've got the final quarter upon us, we get ready to start the fourth. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Well, this is where an offense needs to show what it's made of. And in fact, where a quarterback needs to show what he's made of. Trying to engineer a fourth quarter comeback. And he hits a big one right there. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now. First and 10. Not liking the look. They'll change the play. A give running right is Hall. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. That's caught. It's Flowers. Touchdown. Zay Flowers. 30 yards. And the Shamrocks answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Extra point up and through by Myers, and that gives him a three-point lead. Jason Myers set to kick off. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Second and one. This is caught by Evans. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 33 yards that time. They will run out of the gun with Jacobs. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. It's caught. Cooper. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. 
And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They'll look to throw again. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And now, meanwhile, after the dust settles on the fumble, we've got an injured player here as well. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A short throw to Musgrave. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Now, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Five yards that time, taking it himself, and he has enough for the first. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. And let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. They'll set up to throw. That is intercepted. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. Here's first and ten. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to the huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him, all focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. He's back to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Back to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Jenkins. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. A 
Oh, they're going to run a little pop pass here. And he's just going to run right into that big old defensive end. And that play going nowhere. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Back to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. He'll look to throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. Boy, so another interception, C.D., and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it or you start thinking about going to his backup. And he is going to have a first down here, and that should be the one that seals a victory. So this crowd will not go home happy. It's a victory for our visitors. Charles, for this losing side, their heads are hanging as they walk off the field today. And really, I mean, we know why those three turnovers by that offense, that's ultimately what doomed them. And this is what coaches preach all the time to every team that we ever talk with. Taking care of the ball on offense, trying to take it away on defense. And let's face it, when you give it away three times in one game, you make it very difficult 